Bob Horowitz is the executive producer Bob of Friday hey. Night Show on Channel 10, CBS 10. It's the ultimate Super Bowl's greatest commercials, the ultimate countdown. Bob, what's going on? How are you? Hello, Bob. Uh, I'm good. I'm just uh, I'm just waiting to you know to watch on Sunday the uh, the next batch of Super Bowl commercials and see if any of them can. Uh, can rival those classic Super Bowl commercials that you see in our show every single year and obviously on CBS Friday night at 8. Is it a little different now with commercials, though, because in a social media world you got QR codes and hashtags and people want to trend with algorithms. Does that take a little away from the creativity of Super Bowl commercials, like current-day Super Bowl commercials? I think it, it – I don't know if that takes away from – I think what – what takes away a little bit is the surprise uh, factor of in the old days, you never knew what you were going to see come Sunday. And it wasn't so much that those, you know, media platforms didn't exist, you know, content platforms. It, at that time, it's also that you weren't spending $7 million as your entry fee to just advertise for 30 seconds. So, you know, the price tag, when it's all said and done, is probably about $12, $13 million a spot with all your yeah. you know, spokespeople and advertising. And so, you know, you need to then amortize that over a campaign that leads up to the game. So I think it takes away a little bit. And if they're clever, though, you want to watch and really see what, you know, what happens. Now, as the executive producer, Bob, you're kind of the expert we had you on last uh, couple of years because the special's been, what, 23 years now, I see. The Super Bowl began in 1967. So what year do you think the Super Bowl commercials became this uh, behemoth that we know today? Because I don't recall this ever in the 70s, maybe in the 80s. What year would you say it really— In the 80s. In the 80s. 80s, okay. It, it, it started— when I say it started, it it started with Coca Cola in the Mean Joe Green spot. Oh and, yeah, and that didn't mean that Super Bowl commercials are big time, but that you know that one uh, became one that people would talk about forever. Then in 1984, Apple did the big Macintosh 1984 commercial to coincide with the launch, you know, the spot. And we have that in our show Friday night, the story behind it. That spot almost never aired because the board of directors wanted the marketing department to sell off, you know, the 30 and 60 that they had bought in the game. And so as a result of that, that we got that great form of creative. In 1984, that was the first big Super Bowl commercial, and then people started to talk about it. Um, and that's 40 years ago, and to this day, uh there's just so many classic commercials yeah. that are in that bucket of great Super Bowl commercials. And we, and we have a tough time every single year, not which ones they are, but you know, making the, 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 judge, you know, the judgment of which makes the show this year and up because we know the viewer wants to watch those great spots over and over again because it's the only time they see them during the course of the year. Yeah, I want to mention everyone, too, the show Super Bowl's Greatest Commercials, Channel 10 and 9 o'clock on Friday. So, Bob, do you know if there's been a spot, and maybe it's not the greatest spot of all time or maybe make, not making your list, but is there a spot that credits a company making, like, boy, we were just a good company, but after this Super Bowl commercial, it launched our company to a whole new different demo and era, and it kind of made our company. No, um, like you I, knew of us, not but really. boy, this we no, got on the we got on the map after this. I I would say it's a great question. My my answer is going to be no. I might say, <laughs> was there a company that went ahead and advertised in the Super Bowl, did this, and that all of a sudden be you know became the start of that company being no longer, you know, well, that, yeah. that flops, you know, there, there've been flops, um, and, you know, desperate attempts like, you know, the dot-com era, but that's a great question. I'm, um, 
Because you could argue, Bob, and say all those Bud Light commercials throughout the years took them on a different level with the I love you, man, the what's up, and all that, the the guys dressing in drag, uh, all the iconic Bud Light commercials, you almost think, like, you would almost think of those commercials before you think of the product. Yes, yeah. But you would, but the beauty of that, that's a great point, but the beauty of it is that you do attribute it to the product, that uh, in a very... I don't think anybody says, uh, what's up, was that Miller Lite? Yeah. I think they yeah. know it was Bud Light, right? Like, I think they know it was Bud Light. Like, they know that. Yeah. Or Budweiser, that they're clever. Oh, the frogs, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yep. yep. So, um, but, but, but yes, it's the where, the, where Budweiser, and I call him the king of Super Bowl commercials, where Budweiser has just been genius, is that, They've not only won at the water cooler on Monday morning, but they they resonate and they become a part of pop culture. And people are talking about them year after year after year. And what's also cool, you'll see it in our show because Budweiser, who we work with very 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 closely, um, and you know because they're the king of Super Bowl commercials, they're bringing back the Clydesdales on Sunday. So oh, they nice. allowed us to go on set for the behind-the-scenes look at uh, the Clydesdales coming back. And what Budweiser is so great at when you involve you know, their Clydesdales and then dogs, it's great storytelling. And they continue a storyline that has existed before, and they you know, continue it on this Sunday. And, again, I think that's genius, and it's a great form of entertainment. I'm sure that one will rate right up there. Um, and will become a classic going forward. And Bob, as uh, you know, Budweiser already was the king of beers. They're a huge, huge worldwide uh, brand. So it's not about no longer selling product or maybe a different business selling uh, a service. Is it more just you're spending all that money for buzz? Because, I mean, Budweiser didn't need the help uh, in the grocery stores. Like old old man Rign, old Fred Wrigley would would say when he was uh, he was flying the plane and, and a reporter asked him, um, "Why do you advertise when you have a hundred percent market share?" And he looked out the window and said, "Look at those, see those propellers." He said, "Just because you're flying, we don't stop the engine, right?" And that yeah, I, I think there's a lot to that. That you know they were so dominant and they they just wanted to continue in that area and they and they knew there'd be a, other people, you know, gunning at, you know, at them. But in the Super Bowl business, I don't think anyone can catch them. You know, anyone can catch right. them. And, you know, it's because they're too, <laughs> just too far, uh, you know, ahead. And because they have so many brands, so what they're able to do is they were able to give you the dogs and the Clydesdales, and that tugs on the heartstrings. Is the, They're able to give you the what's up and tugs on the funny, right? And that's those are all the ingredients of a great creative that resonates every year. Is there a new company that perhaps is using the Super Bowl as a launch? I remember when GoDaddy kind of joined the party. Nobody would heard what GoDaddy. Is there a company we're going to be talking about on Monday that we're not even aware of today? Wait, now you, you just came up with one. We're, i got to... When you said GoDaddy, I would say, and we've we've had them we've had them on and work with the company. That would be the commercial where you asked, was there a company that used the Super Bowl to launch really their product, right? And grew. And I would say it's GoDaddy. Yeah. You you answered your own question. Yeah. It's GoDaddy. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know um, what? Uh, what I, you know what I love about this program, Bob, and uh, wrap it up with Super Bowl's greatest commercials, the ultimate countdown, is it takes you back to a better place. It kind of jogs the memory, almost like music. You remember the summer of '95 when you hear this song, and so, a lot of these commercials, you're gonna go back and go, "Gosh, I remember that one in 2005." A hundred percent. That's we got to get you on the uh, creative team for this show. Hundred <laughs> percent. It's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Like I always say, Charlie Brown's Christmas, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Why do you like to watch those shows every year? You've seen them every year, every year, because it takes you back to a point in time. It's comfort food. It's 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 just it makes you feel good. And Super Bowl commercials does exactly that. So you know, Friday night, eight o'clock. 
you can relive the great spots. And, and the cool thing here is at the end of the show, viewers get to vote live and determine the ultimate winner. You're right. It is 8 o'clock. I was doing it's 8 to 9. I was looking at eight 9. To nine. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Thanks so much, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Do a great job. All right. Enjoy the game and enjoy the commercials. So long.